Hello and welcome to Telecom TV's panel discussion on realizing the intelligence of the network edge. We're here at the Mobile World Congress Discussion Zone at MWC 2017 in Barcelona. And joining me to discuss the network edge, I have on my immediate right, Neil McRae, who is Chief Network Architect at BT. Next to Neil, we have Lindsay Miller, who is VP Marketing Embedded Computing at Artisan. Hi, Lindsay. And next to Lindsay, on her right, we have Klaus Pedersen, who is Director of Telco Servers at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Thank you all very much for joining us on Telecom TV. As our networks evolve, and as enterprises and operators prepare for, 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 for new architectures, and there's this need to deliver more low latency services, we're starting to reevaluate some of the components of our, our network. We're starting to take an interest in the network edge, MEC, multi-access edge computing. Um, why is it that after decades of, of architecting our networks in a certain way, we now appear to be focusing a lot more on what the edge of the network has to offer? Neil, perhaps I can start with you. Sure, I think um, well, I think one of the reasons we've started this change is the growth in demand. You know, before mobile networks were predominantly voice, um, and then a little bit of data, and then you know the big uh, video explosion means that you know carrying video traffic to the center of the network and all the way back out just doesn't work. Um, but then also some other new services that we start to see that are cloud enabled, where having some of the data local um, is is helpful. And I think on the on the fixed side, because um, BT we run a converged network, on the fixed side, we've always had a lot of compute capability on the edge. And what we're now trying to do is, is leverage that in a mobile world. And Lindsay, are we seeing this service, a service-driven demand for, for, for the edge, especially on mobile? Yeah, I mean, the, like you said, the, the demand is there from the users. It's not just texting or voice. The, the experiences are transformative when you look at things that you can do. Just look at Pokemon Go as an example of augmented reality and how users are, are doing that. But take that one step further into how the service provider can monetize new services. It's great from a business perspective as well because it means that there are new offerings that are you know, taking the service be provider beyond the uh, public utility position and into something that the consumer wants and needs. And Klaus. Yeah, I agree with everything that's been said, and on top of that, there's a basic economics. I think when we look at service providers today, communication service providers, the over-the-top providers are stepping in, gaining a lot of money out of, of networks that are very well built, and to get to the proper return on, on investment as the networks are being built out, the carriers need to really utilize their, the, the uniqueness that their distributed infrastructure has and by pushing compute out towards the edge. That's something that's very hard for the large uh, over-the-top providers to do. And that gives rise to a whole new set of services that you cannot implement if you have to backhaul everything. Mm. Plus it gives the cost savings, you, you know, don't create the traffic back to the core when you don't need it, video, all that good stuff. So I think it's imperative, especially if all those investments are being made in 5G, to really make sure that we get the right return on assets. Uh, and that. Taking advantage of that distribution is, for me, the real key to that. And, and Neil, what, what is it exactly that we are pushing to the edge? Because we say it's quite easy to say intelligence at the edge, but what, what exactly does that mean to, to the way you architect a network? Yeah, so if I think about it from our point of view, we're pushing part of our cloud platform to the edge, um, serving mobile uh, applications, fixed applications, business applications even. Businesses want you know low latency, they want their operators to be focused on doing work. Um, our predominant big delivery mechanism at the edge, though, is, is for video. Um, and interesting, you mentioned over-the-top um, providers. For us, um, and for BT, over-the-top providers are, are very close partners for us. We work um, incredibly close with them to put their content at the edge because if you're watching Netflix on, on BT, I want it to be better than all of my competitors. So we have a lot of Netflix at the edge of our network. Um, and we're, work, we're working with those guys, Netflix and Akamai and those guys, to do even more of that um, so that the experience um, that you get on our network is, uh, is better than anyone else's. And, and we, you know, we, we learned something. I visited um, a TV manufacturing uh, plant in, in uh, the Far East where Samsung makes screens. 
one of the things that was really really changed my view on how important this was is you know one of the metrics they use is what they call time to YouTube so when you press the YouTube button on the remote how quickly does that front page load um, and that's a metric we hadn't really considered too much but now it's a it's a critical metric for us because you know almost uh, just over a third uh, of the traffic on our network in the UK is YouTube so I want that to, to deliver uh, incredibly well and then you have all the, the you know Google Mail apps etc um, we want them to, to deliver well. In the future though, and we see this with some 5G use cases, in fact we have a, a use case over on the Ericsson stand right now where um, we're also going to need this to do ser applications like remote surgeon. Now it, this is probably some way off, but if you want to have that tactile experience where you're wearing some sort of glove that gives you feedback, you can't do that in the center of the network, you have to do it at the edge. And I think you know the, the thing that really occurs to me in Mobile World Congress this year is how innovative we've, we're starting to see that but because of uh, edge compute, how innovative services are starting to materialize that before really you know you think, oh, that's too hard, I can't do it because it's, I have to take all this stuff back, I get latency, I get packet loss, I get jitter. Now we can put these services at the edge. And, and I think all, you know, if I wander around Mobile, Mobile World Congress at the moment, all the cool things that I'm seeing with cars, with robotics, with other stuff, all of it is powered by edge compute. So if this makes the services better and a better experience, um, you know, who, who pays for this? Is, it, is this beholden upon the operator or is it beholden upon the, the, servi the service, not providers, but that those people who are providing the OTT services, say the Netflix, the YouTubes, uh, because ultimately it's, it's their brand that's, that's been recognized as, you know, by the user. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the conundrums is that value chain, and it's something that we've, you know, clashed. Many of us have clashed swords on it. Again, my my view is our customers want to use services. Um, if it's YouTube or Netflix or you know some other service, actually, I don't really care what they use use it for as long as the experience is great, and as long as I can do it in a in a way that's cost effective, and I know what the quality is, and I can manage it effectively. So. In terms of who pays, well, ultimately the customer who subscribes pays. Um, they pay some to us, they pay some to the over-the-top guys. Um, you know, there's this myth that the over-the-top guys are, you know, making you know lots of money out of this. Actually, when you look at the over-the-top guys, none of them make that much money. Um, you know, and, and I think the the, the I think it, more and more service providers, over-the-top guys, application providers, you know, car manufacturers, all these verticals, we're gonna to have to work closer and closer to get that model right. Um, not, just, not just from a cost point of view, but to also ensure that these applications that we're building actually work and deliver value. Because if they, if they don't work or they're clunky or whatever, it doesn't matter who makes the money, no one's gonna buy it. And that, that for me at this stage, it's kind of critical because I think we're at a really important transition into this edge compute world. That if we if we make it too complicated or we make it too difficult, people will step back from it. Yeah, I think oh, maybe maybe to add to that, I think the very essence of putting the computer at the edge is to create the flexibility to enable a range of business models, like you know, for BT to make money out of offering better Netflix services because that's Netflix interest, get some revenue out of Netflix instead of delivering a mediocre service from Netflix right. um, and get nothing out of it. Uh, so that's one model, of course, is you know, they're also just a necessity. Or you think of car manufacturers with autonomous cars, a car coming down a corner, hitting black ice, there's a pedestrian that stepped out on the other side. You know, it's important that we figure out you know, should we hit the pedestrian to save the four people in the car? What should we do there? <laughs> and that you cannot sort of wait 10 seconds for right. that to go back to a data center. Yeah, the, and the, the, local, that's a, the yeah, local aspect is important. The, that's a reality, but the car manufacturers will pay a lot of money to make sure that they don't get dragged into court. And, and that's a value, again, that only the CSPs can bring by putting the technology right there where it happens. I, I would just add that um, in North America, you know, we've been doing some trials as well um, on our mobile edge computing platforms and uh, there are actually some really compelling enterprise services that are coming out of this. So it's not just about the consumer and giving them better access to the things that they can do at the edge, but um, 
I think it enables service providers to go into enterprises and offer some really compelling services that may even displace uh, Wi-Fi networks or DAS sort of uh, network implementations um, in places like sports stadiums, shopping malls, large campuses. There are things that you can now do with a mobile edge computing infrastructure that displaces kind of the old world. And how, much, how much of it is driven by the low latency aspect? Well, I mean, we talk about some of these localized services. You talked about the, the accident uh, avoidance, um, which is similar to the demo that we're doing in the Intel booth, but um, I think that latency is important for certain applications, and, and like Neil said, you can't wait to go back to the cloud and then come back down. So, uh, we, we, you know, things like drone control, uh, if you watched, this, if you watched uh, the Super Bowl, um, you saw all those drones flying in the sky and how they were all coordinating. That, that was real-time video. You cannot do that through the cloud. You've got to have it at the edge. And, um, and it's not just the downloads for video, but it's uploading. So if you've got a concert and lots of people attending, they want to upload their videos, and that's just choking the network right now. So uh, video is great. That's a real-time function. Uh, the driving aspect, the drones, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, these are all things that we cannot wait for if we want people to take advantage of them. And if you think about it in a retail context, you know, um, the, the ways that you can reach consumers and then the, the way that you can place ads if you go through some of that OTT content or with those OTT partners, it's a great model for touching the consumer. It's also, I mean, a very practical point on cost serving. When you think of rolling out the networks, if we're expecting all that data to be used and consumed, and then we start thinking about the backhaul, we'll turn all of Europe into one big digging area if we were to you know, put enough fiber in the ground to get everything back to central data centers. So that's a very practical cost consideration as well as to how can we minimize that and use the existing footprint, ex use the existing backhaul by doing more compute locally, by having storage, load, downloading stuff overnight that'll be used during the day, those kind of things. Right. If, uh, if, traffic, if a lot of traffic is only going to the, the small cell or, or, or the, the very edge of the network, does this mean that at some stage we're going to have to put some machine learning, artificial intelligence into this area to, to kind of predict movement so we, we, don't, we, we, can, even, we can have things even, even shorter and quicker? Yeah, absolutely. I think, and, and actually, um, you know, you wander around, you see a lot about virtualization, you see a lot about SDN, and, and actually they're interested in technologies, but in my mind, and um, what those technologies enable us to do is start to work towards that closed loop automation, both of network functions and applications. So we've been working a lot on, on, on a technology that, that, that we're calling telemetry, which allows us to build a clo closed loop that you know, device signals to the network in a much more rich way than ever before. Because we have that edge uh, capability, we can make decisions, so it could be, you know, we recognize someone's on a train, we, we change the profile so that the roaming between the cells is easier on the train, um, or it could be that we have a network problem, we're able to detect that locally, reroute it via cellular instead of fixed. Um, and that whole telemetry enablement, you know, we're talking about uh, uh, milliseconds. I'll give it a real, a real example that actually, in the back, back in 2012, we struggled with, which was Usain Bolt at the Olympics. His, his event lasted 9.6 seconds. So if you've got anything going on in the network or in your application, you know, you, you have no choice but to use some sort of you know, robotics or automation to tackle that because in nine seconds, it's not even on the screen of the operator. So I think the, the, the edge compute capability will only, you know, part of it's offering services to customers, but also part of it is enabling us as service providers to cope with the real time, it must work all the time demand from all of our customers and, and that's, you know, top end businesses, but even, you know, if my granddaughter can't use her phone, she, you know, it's like, why doesn't it work? You know, and, and I think the next generation of people just aren't going to accept any sort of communications break, you know, blackout. And that's where I think this technology will help us run networks more effectively. Oh, and, and make no mistake, there's a phenomenal amount of compute that will be coming to the edge. We have just released some new servers from Hewlett Packard Enterprise that I actually, Deliberate design, 60 millimeter depth, so they'll fit into all those telco environments. And they're more powerful, or as powerful as, as our mainstream computers that we put in data centers. Uh, with, a, again, 
designed to take a whole bunch of acceleration and, and other things that could be done to enhance the kind of applications that has to happen on the edge. Uh, because it's it's not going to be just standard compute. There's going to be all sorts of analytics that can benefit from the use of FPGAs and DSPs and right. graphics processing, etc. Yeah, yeah. An yeah. Example, sure. sorry, example of that actually, where I think, you know, if if you're creative, there already is some artificial intelligence at the edges with video technology today. So, if you want to watch, uh, you want to watch YouTube, you want to watch it on your phone, you have adaptive bitrate. So that is actually going to see. You know, okay, what kind of connection are you on? You know, how how strong is that? Well, I'm going to give you 1080p or I'm going to give you 4, 480. You know, the network is already starting to scale at the edge based on what the consumer can actually do. So I think that's really exciting because it portends to what we will see in the future in so many more ways. And and um, you know, it's it, GPU processing. It's it's standard service, but it's a mix of all those things. And the network is already sensing what the consumer can do and adjusting in order to to serve them best, and that's that's the kind of stuff that we have been doing so far, but I think there's so much more. Yeah, yeah I think the, the one other service I would, that I really don't think anyone has grasped on is what I call proximity. You know, if, if you've suddenly got, with edge compute and 5G um, experience, you know, one gigabit of bandwidth with, you know, a handful of milliseconds, and you've got friends or business colleagues or drones or a number of things that could use this, the, the proximity factor, the only really service providers can offer, you know, Amazon couldn't do this or, or Google can do this because we have, as service providers, we have that proximity to the user. I think there's so many services that I can't begin to imagine um, that I think over the next 12 months we're going to really see the, those shape as, as 5G standards and and, and IoT intermixes uh, with all the things that we've talked about. You know, my mind boggles as to, to what you know comes out at the end of that. Using that, you know, really great proximity view, coupled with high bandwidth, low latency. You know, there's so many great innovative things I think are going to come out in the next 12 months. Can I just ask about security? Does the fact that we're focusing so much on on MEC and mobile edge computing does that make the network inherently more secure, or is it more complex to secure? I would say more tools become available. Again, I would ju just to use an example, the new servers we have released for the edge computing, they are standard enterprise class servers. So they can offer you the same type of security that you can build into your applications in your most secure data center. And that's absolutely critical that we take it out. It's th this notion that it may be a distributed compute infrastructure, but it's throughout, it needs to be as secure. And the point is that suddenly the edge here become access points for the internet as well, exit points, right? So it's not a, it's no longer a closed network. You can't close the door and know that nothing's going to happen in there. There will be attack points right there. Right, and it doesn't have to be bespoke security hardware or appliances anymore because now you can deploy security as a virtual function. So, uh, for example, with Artisan Solution, we, we have a mobile edge computing platform and it's very low latency, but it's chock full of CPUs, and so you can take one of those and run a virtual security gateway on top of it. The, the beauty of this is now with the decentralized function, you can actually take that software and, it, and because it's virtualized, you know, you can run a security function in addition to some of the other things that we're doing at the edge. So I think there are more opportunities cost effectively than we had in the past. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think overall we need to look at, you know, security has been about, we'll stick a firewall here, we'll stick a firewall there. I think we just have to think about how we are building, and, this, this, and we need to do this anyway because of mobile edge compute. We need to think about how we architect the applications you know, what data really needs to be stored where, what encryption do we need to have around it, um, how, do we, how do we use technologies like quantum security to really know if someone has seen, um, seen that data that shouldn't have, and, and these are all technologies that we're experimenting with in BT Labs um, to, to give us a much different way of, you know, every year I'm spending millions making this wall taller and taller and taller. Um, I don't think that's sustainable because um, every year the, the guys trying to hack us, you know, build taller ladders to climb over that wall. Uh, we really need to think of a completely different way of building apps, building solutions, and I think the edge compute uh, capability allows us to do that because we, 
know, we can store fragments of data, we can store data that's, that's kind of not really linked to um, customer information in, in, in very different ways. So I think that's a, a maturity point on this edge compute uh, process that we're going through. Well, thank you all very much indeed. You've given us some fascinating insights into the mobile edge. Um, unfortunately, we have to leave our discussion there, but Neil, Lindsay, and Klaus, thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.